right guys it's that time again which is better and it'll be between illusions by sadus and punishment for decadence by coroner and before i continue i will be leaving links in the description to check out songs by testament and even links to check out my instagram and twitter page there you get to see what bands i'm listening to as well as what my band merch collection looks like so looking at punishment for decadence by coroner certain albums are wonderful to me and as far as i'm concerned you can't get as good as punishment for decadence now the previous album rest in peace was already a highly appealing offering of complex trash but Corey did take some serious steps upwards towards a point where everything would fall in place a track from this album and you'll be amazed by the combination of incredible musicianship and sophisticated yet addictive material and even enjoy the ride the song Absorbed welcomes one to the bizarre circus where Tony T. Barron does the craziest stunts resulting in lab yet logical opener riffs appearing basically everywhere yet nothing sounds out of place here. Corona also relies on a few dream acoustic sections here and there like they do on the song Skeleton on Your Shoulder yet it's clear that a band always puts their riffs first. The speedy sections that shortly follow up with sound fast and furious yet extremely calculated almost bring to mind Slayer if only they had earned a PhD in thrash metal. At one point, we're talking about yet another feast of their own riffs that have been used to absolute perfection. If you think that's it's all about riffs and nothing else here, then you're about to be proven wrong because you'll be quite fond of Ron Royce's spitting house and as they almost recall, a less tough Tom Warrior. I wouldn't want to say it any other way, but as an overpowering performance, probably be rather unnecessary for this kind kind of start. Tommy T. Barron's solos are the ice on the cake here with the sound both inspiring yet intimidating at the same time. Just hear how he sprints all over the fretboard like a maniac on the, on the song Mash Jackal or how he's all over the place on the instrumental on the instrumental that is Arc Life. Even the latter remains extremely memorable. The riffs jump back and forth, and once it and once the track takes a sinister turn with that tense, speedy riff around the first minute mark, you know that you're in for yet another unforgettable experience. As your most fresh metal albums, this album features a limited amount of variation, but even the subtle changes here and there turn into fantastic results. The song "Sudden Fall" summons a vortex of clinical thrashing rhythms that have been created by even scientists. At Make of it as you will, going astray and even simplistic, yet mosh worthy riffs that make an unexpected encounter at one point result into the most fun you will ever have with this band. The song New Breed seriously sums up the band's technical scores and makes a ballsy move, as Tom T. Barron's cycle of manical riffs could easily result in disaster here, yet he never forgets what he's capable of. If you ever wondered what playing Fresh Metal on Master Mode would look like, then just Hear those precise yet modern riffs flying everywhere that elaborated guitar solo has finished. Saving the most epic tune for last, Voice to Eternity makes a fantastic ending throughout the riffs, blasting into the hemisphere and despite that fade out, <coughs> you'll probably refuse to believe that Punch of Decadence actually ends at this point. Perhaps the band kept on playing and pro to produce and decided to <coughs> fade out because the time was running out. Either way, all good things come to an end, although I should admit that you could probably listen to these elegant riffs for many times over. Now, where's the replay button if I'm wondering? With superb rift after superb rift, Corona never had a final moment and even did more technical thrash metal. In fact, rest in peace and no more colour final albums for what they are, but Punishment for Decadence remains one of the best thrash metal essentials out there. And switching gears, we're going to look at Illusions by Sadus. There are a few things in life that are exciting and as addictive as A's Extreme Metal. The bands that paved the way for bigger, more sonic extremeness, Hellhammer, Celtic Frost, Possessed, Bathory, Sacrifago, Sepultura, Death, to name a few. But in 1988, who would have expected amongst all the fast, mostly fun thrashers from California that there would be four guys from Antioch who would make a pummeling niche in the 80s Extreme Metal metal scene that was faster and more insane than anything that you've probably heard. I'm referring to Sadus by the way. So they were they came together in 1984 and the members were still in high school at the time and they were produced the Death to Posers 
demo in 1986, which was followed by a certain, a, a certain death demo in 87, before putting on a compilation called Raging Death, which also featured some guys called Executioner who would go on to become obituary. The band self financed. This finance debut, which was self financed, followed in '88, produced by John Marshall, then the guitarist Mel Church, and went on to sell over around 7,000 copies. Subsequent pressings did, however, rename it Chemical Exposure. Go, Illusions Only Explodes Out Your Speakers, and it's fast riffing, hammering, drumming, intricate bass work, and some of the most hastily screamed vocals in the range house at the time. Like some sort of evil, mean, Freeway, when I call Salvatore and Schizophrenia, Sacrifragos, in RI, and Death Scream Bloody Gore. Illusions doesn't quite get the credit it deserves. Honestly, it's far more intense than anything that was being called Death Metal at the time. The fact that even within all the rage and chaos, there's balance and intricacy within, which really makes it one of the most important records within the development of the genre. And again, there's plenty of fresh to be found mostly creator influence. Finnick, which will indefinitely have this record, labels as a fresh slash death record. Nevertheless, Illusions just kills. Steve DiGiorgio, who'd eventually be known as a bass god, is simply amazing here. His explosive fretless bass work stands out dynamically amongst speed and aggression, and all the technically all the technicality that would let it sharp in his stint with death is on display here as well. There's even a bass solo, which is just unheard of at the time. Darren, Darren Travis and Rob Moore's guitar work is pushed to the limit, easily being some of the fastest fresh riffing at the time, yet much like the bass, has more than enough thrill behind it and even some of the damn pleasing riffs and solos to boot. The same goes for John Allen's drum work. He, he just beats the absolute bejesus out of them during the duration of the record, but the technical percussion massacre that is, is was again just not heard of at the time. And of course, Darren's vocals are beyond insanity, just splitting fast shrieks and long winded howls that just send shrivels down your spine and even sound intense, even now. Even now, It'd be tortured to pick a favorite favorite song as the whole album just stands stands mightily. But the songs on Dead, Say This Attack, and Torture really do hit home. And just get and just sound more exciting every single time I even listen to it. I'm talking about the total head banging, fist pumping, toe tapping, and screaming in your screaming in a room by yourself while listening to this. So this will go on to sign a deal with Rolling Records and release Solid in Black in 1990, which is which is just as good, but not as nearly chaotic, but furthers the technicalities of the music greatly. Regardless of the, of their shaky career. You, you owe yourself to give these guys a listen. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought was the better album. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.